Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and more. I try products out for you so you know what to buy, more importantly, what not to buy. Today I'm back with part two of my try-on session for all the tinted SPFs. I'm trying them all on. It was too long for one video, hence part two. You're gonna see swatches, you're gonna see application demos. You're gonna get some high level tips for each. Also, you can find your favorite for spring, summer 2021. Yes, we are 2021, you guys, we are here. Today I have eight more to go and I'm gonna run through all of them today. Before I dive into them, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you see future roundups for other things like foundations and mascaras and concealers and you'll never miss a thing. If you'd like to dive deeper into any of these products, I will have links to the scorecard reviews below. The scorecards are the foundation of everything over here. So it dives deeper into what it looks like, the ingredients, application, all the thick scent, all of it's in there. You can do that. This is just high level. All right, let's start with the first one for this part two roundup. And it is, I feel like I sound very announcery, but I'm just gonna go with it. The My Shell Liquid Sun Shield. If you watch the channel, you knew this was coming. This is SPF 50 broad spectrum. I have it in the shade nude, light, medium, three shades available. And it's $24 and it's usually always on sale at Pharmaca for less. There is a link below if you wanna check it out. Let's know about this guy, girl, it. There's 16% zinc in here. I like 20% personal call, 16 is okay. The coverage is one of my absolute favorites. I feel like this gives you the lightweight coverage with SPF that's very substantial without any dewiness. So if you're avoiding the dew and you wanna stay under 25 bucks, this is something you definitely wanna check out if you haven't already. And it has a glass bottle. But really the coverage here kind of won me over. I've talked about it a lot. And my skin still looks like skin, just evened out. And protected from the sun's harmful rays. Next up we have the Aaron's Faces Mineral Sheer Tint. This is SPF 20, it is $40. There are five shades available. I have the shade Light. This is a small business, woman-owned company. Really, really cool owner, by the way. Check out the site. I happen to love some of the other products like the mascara. Here's what you need to know about this one. 5% zinc only. There's also titanium dioxide in here. And unfortunately, there's retinal palmitate and dimethicone. Are they villain ingredients? No, they're not. Also, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, so definitely just do your own research. It's very personal. My skin breaks out when I use products that contain dimethicone, so that's out for me. Again, personal call. And I prefer products without retinal palmitate. You can Google around and see why I'm saying that. I'm not gonna dive deep into it, but I just wanna give you a heads up that that's in here. These are not deal breakers for everybody. This is just me telling you a little bit more about ingredients. That said, the finish on this was beautiful. Having dimethicone or any type of silicone really makes the application lovely. It's just kind of this sheer silky glides on, gives that luminous glow without looking oily. It adheres so it doesn't slide down. I really loved how this applied, how it looked, it was just the ingredients and the SPF was a little low for me, plus it's a plastic container. If you're going plastic free, which you know I highly recommend, it's a little tricky. And this is gonna be one more piece of plastic. However, the company is looking at sustainability options for other products like their mascara comes in a glass container. It's just this one is plastic. That's pretty much it for that. Now we have two from Suntegrity, another brand that I've really grown to love. I love their self tanner. I need a haircut guys. Uh, hence the headband. Love their self tanner. And first up from them is the Suntegrity 5-in-1 Natural Moisturizer Face Sunscreen. Natural Moisturizing Face Sunscreen. Natural Moisturizing Sunscreen. Ugh, Vasis on the sunscreen. This has a very slight tint. It is SPF 30. 45 bucks. Four shades available. I have it in shade light. Here's what you need to know. 20% non-nano zinc oxide. Thank you very much. Lots of hydrating oils in here, which I like. However, there's acetyl dimethicone. We already know the story about my skin and dimethicone. You guys know now. They are changing up the packaging to be a bit more sustainable. This is tricky to recycle, although they do 
partner with other programs. More about that is on the scorecard. The coverage here, I would say, is a little bit dewier, a little bit richer, which to some will seem a little bit heavier. I'm not gonna say it's heavy. It's just a little bit heavier in the spectrum of tinted SPFs. Primarily, I find them to be very lightweight. And it's more of a sheer light coverage. So you're not getting a ton of evening out, which might be great for you if you don't want that. There you have it, a little bit dewier, a little bit richer, more sheer of a coverage, and it's a little bit further up in price. And then the other one from Suntegrity is their Impeccable Skin. This is mineral matte tinted coverage. I don't know about matte, but it's not shiny. I just don't know about matte. They've called it velvet finish in the past. Usually when I see that, fun fact, my skin just does not respond well. However, this formula does very well. And I just read they're considering changing it from velvet to satin. So I'm okay with whatever. I just know it's not super matte. It doesn't look matte and my skin looks like skin, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Again, SPF 30, $55, six shades available. And I have this in the shade sand. There's 15% non-nano zinc in here. So 5% less from the five in one that I've just mentioned. However, there's no cetyl dimethicone in here. So I'm very happy about that. I also feel like this is a richer formula to some in the comments in the past on just the reviews that I've posted. They've said it's a little too heavy for them. It feels a little bit too oily. So if you have oilier skin, you might wanna take that into consideration. And samples were available when I first purchased this. So travel sizes were available. Always recommend that if you can find it. I happen to adore this product, personally speaking. I love what the coverage looks like and how it responds to my skin. This is sort of like a foundation for me. It's a little bit more than the sheer to light to barely medium. This for me is more medium. If you want more SPF with this, however, and you wanna layer it up, you know, with an SPF, if you're using this as an SPF, I usually don't, I'll do a review or a video on my routine. You would have to apply a lot here to really get the full coverage that you need, which might be a little bit too heavy. So what I usually do is I'll have a base SPF product, moisturizer, whatever, and then I'll apply just a little bit of this on top. So I don't necessarily use it for SPF. I just love the coverage. Just sharing the honest truth here. It's one of my favorites for that reason. Up next, we have something from the company that I'm currently obsessed with, which is Say. This is their Sun Visor Broad Spectrum Sheer Moisturizer. So this is the sheer version of their slip tint that I just reviewed and like gushed about repeatedly on this channel. So you guys, if you've seen it, then you already know I kind of love that. I wanted to try this because it's the sheer version for those who do not want a tint or don't want anything else involved. This has a slight tint, but really don't want that extra coverage. SPF 35, $34. There's what you need to know about it. I feel like this is one of the lightest weight wash on SPFs that I've ever tried. It does provide a dewy finish, a lightweight dewy finish, which is really nice. Sometimes when products provide or claim to provide dewy finishes, in my experience, they feel heavy and oily, and I don't like that. This did not have any oiliness about it. It does give that glow that the slip tint, the more tinted moisturizer does have as well. So you're getting this kind of light reflection glow. I happen to love it. Uh, and you'll see the swatch in the application. So you can tell for yourself whether or not that's a finish you usually go for. On the site, they say that oilier skin types may wanna pass, but I think it could be fine. I just think you can't use a ton of it. So you'd have to probably compensate with another SP. Also for the win, their packaging strategy is on point. I talk more about that in the full review back on the site so you can learn more there. And then we have the Blissoma Photonic Light Shifting Solution. It's photonic. That makes me think of Boston University. They had a photonics building. Oh boy, college. Bringing it back to 2021 here. This is SPF 25. It is 52 bucks. 12.5% zinc in this little guy. One shade. This is the sample travel size. I got this from a subscription box, but the full size is 52 bucks. So I highly recommend this because I'm still going through it. Here's what you need to know about Blissoma. This is just brand new. I've had it sitting here and I just haven't used it yet. So I was really excited to try it out. This is your skincare meets SPF product out of this group has a lot of that, touts a lot of that, claims a lot of that, and you can see it in the ingredients list, so they're not just making it up, it's in the ingredients. A lot of skin-loving ingredients are there, so I think that also is why you're seeing sort of an increase in the price. This is 
is more on the sheer side of coverage. The evening out wasn't there in the opacity of the product. The light reflecting thing, like the Jedi mind trick that happens with this is pretty interesting. Reminds me a little bit of the Say, but this dries down better if you're looking for something that isn't as dewy. This really just goes on, dries down, not drying, but you can't feel it. It's not sticky tacky on the fingers. It gives this light reflecting glow not glitter or anything, but you know what I mean? It's sort of that lit from within, skin's looking pretty healthy. Um, so I really like it for that. I think this is probably more for people who are A, okay with that price point, but also looking for sheer coverage with a decent SPF in there that doesn't look or feel slightly sticky or dewy or oily. I honestly can tell you, I have not seen this combination, this performance combination in a product yet. So I love when I discover things like that, that are brand new, very different and have those differentiators. So I was excited about that for this. I wanted to share it with you. And the last two, I don't have the products on hand because they expired and I brought them into Credo and I dropped them off responsibly in an eco-friendly manner. They are the Marie Veronique Tinted Moisturizer. I will link to the review as well here. I'm just gonna say short story was my skin in this did not, we did, we are not mixing. We are not vibing, we are not gelling. It, did not, it just didn't look natural on top of my skin. And that's that. I do think Marie Veronique is an incredible brand. There's a lot of integrity behind the brand. I encourage you, if you're not familiar, to check them out. That tinted moisturizer and I, it just separated. It grabbed onto patchy skin and my skin wasn't even dry. It just wasn't a win for me. And then the last is the Well People Biotint. This is more affordable. It's under $30. I remember trying this out five years ago. Wow, has it been five years? Ooh, I don't think it was a first impressions. I don't think I'm gonna like this because it felt stickier. Felt a little too sticky, I don't like that. And after leaving it on the skin for a couple of minutes, it did its thing. Sometimes formulas do that. Sometimes you have to give it a minute or press it in or, you know, judge a little bit. This one was pretty impressive. The price point's pretty impressive and I was a fan of it. So I wanted to include it in the roundup even though I didn't have the actual product in my hands. That is the part two roundup of the tinted SPFs. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have some favorites that you didn't mention last time, then by all means, leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna go put these away and I will see you right back here real soon. Until then.